Clinic Telehealth Hotline at 270-746-5790. All right, thank you, Kenzie. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce today's speakers. With us today, we have Jason Heflin and Chad Webb with CrowdSouth. Chad and Jason are the co-owners of CrowdSouth, a digital marketing agency that focuses on social media management and advertising, search engine marketing and websites. And they have offices in Bowling Green and Louisville, but their clients can be found all over the United States. With us from Yonson Co. is Jessica Yonts. Yonson Co. was founded by Jessica Yance with the intention of standing out and being passionate about each brand and their marketing needs and ultimately leading them to success. With more than 14 years of experience in a broad range of industries, they know and understand your customer, know and understand customers, giving them the insight on how they can provide the means, provide you the means to speak to them. Vision, action, and results are the foundation of Yonson Co.'s method, whether designing brand, designing branding, developing websites, creating content telling your story or simply deciding on tea or coffee before a map out session. Every piece of the puzzle is equally important to the Yonson Co. team. And representing Sublime Media Group today is David Jose. Sublime Media Group was founded in 2011 by John Doss and Austin Albany. The business originated as a video production company in Bowling Green, Kentucky. In 2013, they partnered with website developer Ross Brown and, created, and started creating websites. This award-winning creative team at Sublime Media Group is capable of producing video and web projects of all sizes. SMG has worked with local, regional, and national level clients. Guys, thank you so much for being here with us today. Jessica, would you like to start us off? All right, can y'all hear me? Yes. All right, let me... Right there. Can y'all see that? That work? Okay. Um, all right. So let's start it, kick it off with um, some branding. Want to really just talk um, to y'all about what is branding. I think that a lot of people, um, I know some counterparts would also say that their clients say the same thing, that branding is a logo. And I want to make sure that when we walk out of this call that you understand what a brand is, you're able to really dive into your company and what your brand is. Um, now more than ever, it's super important both visually um, and in the, the content that you use that you communicate your brand um, very clearly. So um, this is kind of the overview of what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to talk about branding. We're going to talk about being able to amplify your brand, your company, your product, or your service um, visually. We're going to give you some tips, um, some free tools. Um, I would say a lot of us aren't um, graphic designers by trade, but um, there are some tools out there that you can use um, right now just to kind of get started. Some of you may not have any idea where to start. Um, so this should kind of allow you um, some freedom to create, um, but also to have some consistency. Um, we also, um, Kenzie, I don't know, or um, Katie, did y'all send out the link? It was just shared in the chat window, the handout. All right, um, I'm gonna go through that, um, but I'm not gonna read it word for word. Um, if there's questions, I'm happy, um, Y'all can email us after this, myself, Sarah, um, or Johnny are happy to kind of answer any questions um, about any kind of messaging framework. Um, but it just gives you all a structure, um, just a guide to help you. A lot of people um, don't maybe even know what, what brand messaging is, and that's okay. And that's what we've kind of created this um, outline to do. Um, and then how to, sorry, and then how to communicate um, your brand. Once you've got all the tools, you feel good about the way it looks visually and, and then creating those words, that language that, um, that really allow your audience to experience your company. All right. So again, kind of that holistic approach to somebody experiencing your brand, your product, your service. Um, it is more than a logo. Um, what are those things that 
are visual. You know, when you think of, it doesn't have to be a national brand, but that's always um, something easy to reference. When you think of those brands that you love, you know what their colors are, you know what their icon is, and more so you know how that product or service makes you feel when you buy it. Um, and that's what we want to create. You don't, um, everybody should have the opportunity, um, whether you're just starting out or you're a company that's been around for a long time um, and just growing, you should be able to have that consistency and want that consistency. Um, and how, how you make your customers feel before they purchase your product um, that first time or that service, um, you want them to feel that in your website, in your social media, and I know, um, and through video, and I know the guys are gonna kind of help dive into that as well. Um, visual branding, when you think of a visual brand, I hope you think of, and I've just got like a card, no, it's a card here, but I hope you think of something besides just the name. I hope you think of the plus signs. I hope you think of, you know, kind of introduced the Buffalo um, Pop Works. I hope you think of something fun and those, those are the things that you want your brand, you think about your product, your service, your company, what do people think? Um, and again, just that consistency, making them want to follow your social media um, or your LinkedIn page or look at your website. Um, brand messaging, do you have, you don't, I don't know, we go back and forth a little bit. Maybe you don't have this like tagline that's always attached to your logo, but you do need a brand statement. You do need something that really allows you even more concise than your elevator pitch to very clearly, this is who we are, this is what we do, and this is what defines us. Um, it's really important for us to just kind of start at that basis um, so we can execute those things from a marketing standpoint. Because if you don't have this kind of foundation, um, the rooms, if you will, to the house, the walls, it's really challenging to get somebody to understand what your brand is and, and why your brand is um, a good fit for them or you know, better than another product or service out there. Are we saving questions for the end? All right. Um, so again, this kind of goes along with the visuals from that outline and that handout that was sent. Um, it's on our website if you don't have it um, right in front of you. But thinking about just visual branding, um, do you have a logo? Do you have a color palette? Do you just select whatever colors um, are on Canva, whether it's pink or purple and your brand is black and white. Um, I think it's really important to select those colors that play into what your ideal customer um, is going to like um, and relate to. Um, so they're, again, kind of under each of these, but also in that handout, um, we have just some free tools and tips um, that you all can reference. Um, same thing with fonts. So do you use the same fonts on your website? as you do on your social media, um, any kind of other advertising that you do, whether it's video or print, are you using consistent colors and fonts? And if you're not, select some that, that go with your brand. I mean, there's a lot of purpose. Um, I think some people, um, especially people on my team, can kind of geek out over a specific font and the way it makes you feel. Um, and it's not just one. Do you use the same header fonts? Do you use the same text fonts? Um, subheader fonts, those are not your logo fonts. <laughs> those are something else. So make sure that you're selecting something that it makes you feel, you know, is, is, your, is your brand very established and you want it to feel old school um, and using something that is more um, vintage, if you will. Um, so I think that there's a lot more thought put into that than just um, eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Um, so I've got a reference for that. And then your style. Um, the way I would kind of sum up 
your style and I'll put photography in there together is a mood board. So what does that look like? What does your company look like when you put it on a wall and it's a mood board? Is it soft colors with, you know, very bright white photography or is it um, very contrasted with very bold colors um, and script fonts? Those are super important. And again, thinking about what your company is and how it is represented visually um, on all platforms, whether it's social media, um, a website, or you know, some kind of print or video. All right, and then we'll get into the messaging. And um, I think for for a lot of people, this is hard. Um, there is um, overall, I will say, if you can clarify your message, then you can amplify it. So what is your offer? And I'm not gonna go through every um, single step on that worksheet. Um, Y'all can all read for yourselves. Um, but I do kinda wanna run through these um, just so you understand kind of what they are. So what is your offer? What are you offering that is different from a competitor? Um, what are you offering that solves a problem for your consumer? Write that down. And then you can refine it. Um, who is your customer? And the people that say, well, everybody's my customer. There's a very specific profile <laughs> that, that you're looking for. You know, there is, there's a core demographic. Um, I won't get into the specifics of that, but what do they do? Where do they shop? What do they like? How old are they? Do they have kids? Who is your ideal customer at the core? Everybody else is just icing on the cake. And then your message. Um, whether you're talking about your short brand message that you can put on, um, you know, all your marketing pieces that you can, again, clarify in a specific um, area and then be able to amplify that in your full circle marketing. Um, the channels, the channels that you use, um, not, you know, I would say the, um, Counter, my counterparts would say this too, you don't need to be on every platform. <laughs> Where are your customers and focus, clarify your message and focus on those channels. Um, and then being able to um, really market um, to those channels. So in all things, clarifying your message and then being able to amplify it. Um, I really think that worksheet that we've created um, will help you do that and really guide you. Um, I would love to have feedback on that. If y'all have any questions, again, um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, but if there's any now, I don't know how, um, if y'all wanna do questions now or if you don't wait till the end. We'll wait until the very end so we can collect all of the questions at once. All right, awesome. Jessica, if you don't mind to pass the host um, rights back to me, That work? Not yet. Okay. Um, I've got them in Chad and Jason. Would you guys like to go ahead and start your presentation? Sure. Yeah, we can. Um, Kenzie, are you able to share, the, or whoever's driving, are you guys able to share the PDF, or do you want me to try to give it a shot? If you'll try to give it a shot, um, I still haven't got hosting rights back. Sorry, guys. No, you're, you're okay. Let me, let me try here. One moment. Let me see if this works here. Can you guys see that? Yes, yes we can. All right. All right, I'll kick it off. Um, thank you guys. First of all, thanks to the Chamber for hosting this today. Uh, it's fun. It's fun to get on here with some of our contemporaries and, and uh, talk about our different expertise and um, collaborate on, on ideas for you guys so that, um, so that hopefully we can uh, give you some good pointers and tips uh, on uh, your own 
uh, your own marketing, uh, as well as, um, you know, uh, help the chamber out, um, by providing some content. So, uh, thanks again for inviting us and, uh, next slide, Chad. Um, who, who are we? Um, well, we're a digital marketing agency. Uh, I think all of us, uh, presenting here today are, so, um, we all have different, um, expertise and focuses. Um, for us, we focus, uh, as in our tagline and our logo, we focus on social sites and search. So what that means is we do social media management, uh, advertising and full management, uh, reputation management for companies. Uh, we do web development, um, different, uh, different types of web development. So we can do uh, small projects uh, and then also larger um, project managed stuff as well. Um, and then search marketing for us, that's, uh, that is both SEO and SEM and, uh, SEO is search engine optimization. SEM is search engine marketing. And when I say search engine marketing, I mean, uh, essentially Google advertising, uh, is the, the lion's share of that. Uh, and then we also do other things like branding and project management and, um, uh, a, a whole host of other, uh, supplementary uh, services, but those are our core three that we that we really try to focus on. Uh, we've been around for uh, almost seven years now uh, as Crowd South, and before that, Chad and I were both in the corporate world for um, quite a long time. Um, for myself, it was twelve years, um, and then uh, I did some other things. And then Chad, after he left corporate, he did um, he did some uh, work for a company out of England uh, and. Uh, he also worked out of Florida for a while. So we've got a little bit of big business experience that we like to bring to some of the smaller and medium sized businesses uh, that we work with. But we have offices in Bowling Green and Louisville. Uh, we just opened the office in Louisville um, last year. So um, that's been a lot of fun. It's been mostly my baby. I've been up there quite a bit, but we've got, um, we got 14 team members, two of which are up there in Louisville, 11 are here, and uh, one who was in Louisville just moved to Houston. So she's a remote worker like all the rest of us right now. So, um, so that's a little bit about us in a nutshell. I'll jump in here and talk about some of the, uh, some of the best practices, things that have changed in the last um, 10 weeks or so with, uh, with social media or the kind of the things that we're seeing. Um, you know, a lot of times, um, People spend uh, spend a lot of effort trying to determine kind of when is the best time to um, to post across different um, different social media accounts and networks and things like that. Um, and as you'll see here, people are consuming much more digital content via social media these days. A lot of that's because a lot of people are home more um, and uh, are able to uh, spend time on that. So you know, there, you can see here that. A lot of the optimal times for engagement across Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter have grown. You know, Facebook, it was just one hour um, a day on Wednesday, um, and now it's moved to uh, one hour, but Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they're seeing a bump in engagement there. Instagram um, was uh, twice a week, um, uh, one hour on Wednesday, one hour on Friday. That's moved to three times a week um, at 11 a.m., and then Tuesday at two, and then the um, Twitter. Optimal Twitter engagement is, has moved as well um, to, uh, instead of it being across two days, it's one day uh, in the morning on Friday. Um, and those times are central time, according to the report. But you know, the main thing to, to look at there, these are general numbers that are brought to, um, were brought to us by Sprout Social, uh, social, media, social Media Engagement Report. But I think as business owners and as entrepreneurs, I think a lot of what uh, businesses need to look at is what works best for you and the you know the way to try that and, and jessica had a good point when she said we don't need to be on every single platform necessarily for your brand you need to focus on what works best for you what works best for a, an oil uh, a company that does oil changes is different than a company that does um, nails or a bowling alley or anything like that so you have to be aware and test some things with um with your uh, with your posts and look at the data that you're provided inside each of those um, each of those platforms and make decisions based on that. But now is the perfect time to test these things. As the, um, as the world starts to open back up, these numbers are gonna change as well. A lot of this was based on um, when people were at home. So it's something to think about and it's something to be aware of in your own personal um, 
business uh, social media platforms. Yeah, and like Chad said, I mean, the um, everything's dynamic right now. So, you know, not getting too set in the way you're doing things is quite important. Um, you know, following best practices uh, is fantastic. Uh, but as Chad said, those times change um, for the best times to post are, are, are very fluid. So, um, you know, keep in mind your specific industry as well as, um, as, well as what's happening in the broader uh, world. So, and that, that kind of uh, parlays into this next slide, which is, um, you know, really talks more about shifting your content itself. Um, you wanna bring uh, as much of the experience to your platform as possible. Um, walk people through the business, and we don't just mean like virtual video walkthroughs, but, uh, you know, walk them through what you do. Walk them through how you're operating right now, because uh, in many cases that's changed. Uh, hours are different. Um, the, the way that they interact with, um, brick and mortar businesses is very different. And even the way that, um, online businesses and e-commerce businesses are working, that's evolved, uh, somewhat as well. And will eventually, we hope evolve back to a similar way that we did things before or a new normal. So, uh, be prepared for that to change as well. Um, so, so being flexible is, is very important. Um, also teaching, you know, um, what uh, our contemporaries and us are doing here with you today is it's very important to, to be open and share uh, what you do, um, not necessarily to protect everything. Um, the idea that, uh, you know, Chick-fil-A has been sending out recipes, for instance, on how to make their, their particular dishes. And they know that's not going to put them out of business because ultimately, uh, you know, not everyone can, can, create that recipe or they don't have the time to do it every day. Um, but what it's doing is it's creating a connection. So offering classes, uh, instructional videos, online courses. Um, if you have a blog, uh, put placing content there, meaningful content, not just sharing others, uh, but meaningful, um, content that was created by you or your team. Uh, podcasts are great. I know a few of us on here have podcasts and, and they're a lot of fun and, and we get to interact with um, experts and clients and um, really interview them and, and learn from them. Um, YouTube, video, blogs, uh, guest posting on other blogs or just being a guest on a, a podcast, a radio show. Um, those are all great ways to um, share information with your audience and connect. And then giving back. Um, there are a lot of people in need right now and uh, you know, we can't ignore that. So if you're communicating with your customers, uh, being empathetic is critical and understanding what they're concerned most about uh, in their lives right now. Um, they may not be concerned about uh, you know, your product right now, but you want to stay top of mind during this time and you want to, um, you want to appeal to them uh, in a place where, where they can understand it uh, because they're, their psychology has shifted. So, um, you know, if you can give back, if you're in a position as a company to give back to the broader community or to a subset of that, which is your client base, that would be a great thing to do right now. Um, you know, give to also give to causes that your audience cares about and then let them know that you're doing that. Um, you know, that's, it, it's not necessarily, uh, Marketing is not about being humble. It's about talking about yourself and, and, and exposing yourself and being open. So talk about the things that you're doing. They want to know those things and they want to be uh, associated with someone who's doing that. So, um, you know, flipping the product and that goes for services as well. But, um, you know, just uh, being willing to pivot uh, is critical to not only the survival of businesses right now, but those that are pivoting are thriving. Um, I know we've done it as a company, changed some of the things we're doing, um, and it's, it's really worked well for us. And I know um, a lot of our clients are doing the same thing. So, you know, think about your product and how it existed in uh, the old world and how it exists in this new world and how it's going to exist in the next version of this world. So, um, you know, being uh, very aware that, uh, again, everything's so dynamic is, is important. And on our final slide here, just talking about how do we communicate um, with our audience, uh, who is our 
you know, our customers and our potential customers. And what we want to do is we want to listen. We want to hear what people are saying and communicate back compassionately. You know, uh, during this time, a, a lot of people kind of don't or, or have been confused and just a general uneasiness. And so I think if we're able to um, accept that, listen to what people are saying and, and make moves that, um, that are appropriate um, to what you're hearing, I think in the long run, that'll build a lot of trust with your, with your clients, your potential customers and, um, and help just, you know, I think, I think reiterating that what you're doing is um, assisting them in, in coming to terms with, with some of the changes that have occurred across, um, across the country and across the world during this time. Next thing would be talk. So what we want to do is we want to clearly state what's happening with your business. Um, if you guys have, have, are starting to reduce hours, or, or I guess what you're probably doing is a lot of you are probably opening up more hours as, um, as things in Kentucky have started, um, started clearing up. So I think any opportunity you have across any of your social media platforms on your website, as well as um, on your Google, Google My Business page, um, if you're able to make those adjustments in the times and um, days and things like that, um, when we're talking about opening, or if you have possibly, uh, say you're a restaurant, you have uh, your menus changed a little bit, we want to be clear on that. We want to make sure that, uh, that that information is out there. And then just reassuring people, if you're able to give um, an update on kind of the future, the future plans of your business, um, if you're in an apartment complex and certain things have closed like the pool or the gym or things like that, if you're able to put out in the future, say, you know, the plan is it's on the, the governor's list to reopen this in three weeks. And that's what we're going to attempt to do. And we're going to follow uh, those rules and a link to those. I think that'd be great as well. So, um, so listening, talking, and then reassuring your customers about what's going on during this time is, uh, I think, just it's, it's at a minimum what we should be doing for our clients and what, um, what you guys should be doing for your customers. I think that might be it. Yep, that's it. So thank you guys for your time uh, and we will pass it back. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you, Chad and Jason. Um, keep the questions coming. We've gotten some good ones over in the chat window. Um, and David, last but not least, Sublime Media Group. I was trying to talk to you, David. Are you having any problems? Can you see this? Nope. So I have multiple participants can share at one time. So you should be able to like at the bottom share screen. Yeah. Can you see that? Here we go. Okay. There you go. All right. So uh, thank you on behalf of Sublime Media Group for allowing us to be a part of this uh, today. So what we want to talk about is video and uh, what is so great about video. Um, consumers, they like video because it's easy to digest. It's entertaining and engaging. And then marketers, they like it because it can give a potentially huge return on investment. Uh, through the various channels that we have. So what is the main reason a lot of businesses don't produce video content for social media advertising? And the, the big reason is fear. Now today, entrepreneur Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, he actually shared with his followers, fear leads to inaction and inaction leads to no results. Uh, creating video can be an overwhelming or intimidating uh, for some business owners. They'll say, I'm not technical or what do I talk about in my video? But hopefully after today, you'll feel more confident utilizing video for social media moving forward. So let's talk about the hurdles. There are other things to consider when creating video, but today we'll talk about just five. You want an effective strategy. If you don't have an objective for the video content you are creating, then, then what's the point? Um, 
what is it that you want to promote? Is it a specific product or service? Is it a general branding campaign you're looking to create? And who is your customer? And what is the best way to reach your customer on social media? What types of videos do I create? Where do I post them? The answers to the questions are crucial in establishing your video marketing strategy. And the types of videos you create should all be dictated around the answers to these questions. If you're selling a product to a female between the ages of 18 to 30, using platforms like Instagram and TikTok, YouTube and Pinterest would be in your best interest. The types of content this demo typically engages with is more influencer-based and authentic marketing. Uh, these include product demos, before and afters, how-tos, and reviews to show expertise using influencers and affiliate marketers to promote their use of your product. Now, studies show people who get an opportunity to see a product in action via an explainer video, they're going to buy that product. All of these examples work well. And with this type of video, production value is not the most important thing. What is important is who is in the video and are they credible and what are they saying? But say your business is more B2B and you want to run a general branding campaign using LinkedIn and Facebook to promote your business is a much smarter choice. Production value is more important in this case because you don't want your company represented by poor quality video content. It's more of a prestige thing. Uh, but some people might see poor quality and equate that to poor products or services. This is also an area where storytelling is typically more effective. But if you don't know what you're hoping to achieve, then how will you measure your success? Have the end goal in mind. More awareness for your company, it equals more sales usually. And you can um, reach your goals with compelling content. You'll hear people say, I can't create great content or I have a business to run and I don't have time creating content. Because of the huge amount of video content online, viewers attention spans are shorter than ever. So it's important to put compelling content out there, but what makes content compelling? It should be content that creates an emotional impact. It can be content that uh, teaches the viewer something they didn't already know, but wanted to, or content that helps them with their purchase decision. Before you start making a video, you wanna ask yourself whether or not you add anything to the customer experience. If the answer is yes, then you move forward. But I can't create content? That's not a sentiment any business owner needs to accept. Don't think you have anything compelling to share? Great content is about answering the questions of your customers. You're an expert in the industry you work in. What do you know that others might be curious about? Is there a question you get from a lot of customers that you could answer in a video? Is there something you could illustrate more clearly on your social accounts with video than you're currently doing with photos or text? Teach people about your business and talk about your products or services or the events you're doing or promotions and share your expertise. And if you're not an expert in your business, then hire someone that is. Most business owners do not want unprofessional or low quality video content being produced for their brand. They feel that if they don't have a $10,000 camera, then they can't create a good video that converts. And even though a cinematic video can be an effective tool for your business, so can raw video. It can look great, uh, and your smartphone is a tremendous tool. Uh, they're shooting TV shows on smartphones now. Uh, I did my internship many years ago, finishing up at Western with the Jim Henson Company. My old friends at the Henson Company have created a new Fraggle Rock show for Apple Television, and I was pleasantly surprised that they shot it all on iPhone 11 from their homes. Uh, which is great. So we're talking broadcast quality with a smartphone. Uh, great examples of utilizing one smartphone camera include live Q and A's uh, with your audience. And if your company is uh, not gonna take themselves too serious, maybe they wanna do um, 
their team uh, uh, doing a, the latest dance on TikTok. Or of course there's boomerangs and um, also testimonials are very effective showing proof of performance of your company. But nobody is reinventing the wheel here. I mean, look at what similar companies are doing on the uh, social platforms and what's working for them and follow those trends. But research is key to the success of this. A lot of video content can be easy to create and it doesn't take a lot of technical knowledge to produce. But the next thing that I want to talk about is putting yourself out there. People are afraid to look at the camera and talk about themselves or their business a lot of times. They'll say, I'm terrible on camera, or I'll just look stupid. But getting comfortable on camera takes time and it also takes effort. You have to take that time. The success of your business can depend on you putting yourself out there to reach your audience and set reasonable goals for yourself. If it is creating a video a day or a week or once a month, set aside the time because growing your business can depend on it. Customers want to know who they are dealing with and uh, showcasing yourself or your team or your products or services is very important. And also be transparent. Show people why you are the best choice for them. We, re we refer to this type at Sublime as the who we are videos uh, or also employee features are important. Event recaps that you're involved with, which can show what is important to your company. Uh, but you want to build positivity for your brand through the video. And the videos don't have to be long. Think about your audience and the platform you're utilizing. There are different suggested links for the social platforms. And sometimes that's trial and error. That's something you can adjust as you see what is working and how long people are watching your content. But the main point is to follow through. Make it just as important as providing for a customer. Over time, not only will you get more comfortable being on camera about your business, but your content will continue to get better as you look at what works and what doesn't. The last hurdle we'll be talking about is a lack of money budgeted for the creation of content. Oftentimes businesses put the majority of their marketing budget in ad placement and not enough in the creation of content. The day and age of making one video and that being enough to market your business for a long period of time, I think that's gone. The average person is fed countless video ads uh, every single day. And you want to have a variety of engaging social video content that gives you the ability to learn what your audience wants and what works best for your brand by seeing which videos get the best response and the conversions. Sometimes the color of a graphic makes a difference, like Jessica talked about. The time of day the ad is fed makes a difference. The length makes a difference. The more video content you provide for your audience, the more data you are able to collect and use to create better performing video content in the future. This allows you to learn your audience, setting goals and utilizing KPIs or key performance indicators through analytics allows you to truly learn your audience. Be sure that you set aside a portion of your marketing budget for content creation. So those are the five hurdles that we hope that we've been able to help you mentally overcome for creating video for your business. I do have a quick, uh, some quick bonus tips I wanted to give you if you'd like to try to create more effective content on social media. So the first one is caption your videos. It's an extra step, but it adds value. Running as an ad on Facebook you might be lying in bed at night and you don't want to wake up your partner by turning on the sound or you don't have your earbuds available or you're sitting in a waiting room. People can read and it also helps with the, uh, those that are hearing impaired. Also, uh, you want to look at the, the formatting for your video on social. Square formatted video gives you more screen real estate you get almost double on square videos 
with the 1080 by 1080 where the standard is 1920 by 1080, but you wanna make sure your video grabs attention in the first three seconds because social moves so fast and people are gonna be scrolling quickly through and they want to, uh, if you want people to stop and look at your video, you wanna have more time to catch their attention. The majority of our clients are utilizing the square videos. If you're unsure how to do this, in an editor, there is free software like iMovie that you can use on iPhone, uh, but YouTube, how to format if you're not aware. And getting down to the basics, if you don't want to fool with all that, then just keep your phone in the vertical position. Um, also, if you shoot your own videos, invest in a lav mic or a shotgun mic you can plug into your phone for better audio. Also, invest in an LED light or a ring light. These are affordable. And a lot of times the lights come with um, a stand to hold uh, not only the light that's making you look better, but also your camera. Uh, so these are affordable ways to easily make your videos more professional. Um, and I want to thank you for your time. If myself or someone at Sublime Media can help you with your content, please reach out. My email is david at sublimemediagroup.com and my phone number is listed on there. It's 270-681-0024. All right, thank you, David. Um, so we are ready to answer some of your questions. Um, Aaron is going to start reading those off, but please keep continue, or continue to submit them in the chat window. Aaron. All right, the first one is for Jessica. Um, it's, you don't have to be on every platform. Would LinkedIn rate as the highest on your list over the other platforms out there? Our organization doesn't have LinkedIn yet, but I have heard it's the best place to be. Um, who asked that question specifically? Um, Glory Baby Ministries. Okay, I think purpose, um, and guys, if y'all wanna chime in with me, <clears throat> um, feel free to, but I think we would all agree that my statement was more so towards who is your target demographic and where are they getting information. Um, so for, for example, um, you know, a nonprofit, if they're on LinkedIn, I think the purpose would be more so for involvement, volunteering, um, you know, donate, you know, like donor. Um, and I think the content um, needs to be different on there. So um, I think my point in saying that um, very specifically was, you know, if, if your audience, you know, 90% of your audience is like an Instagram, that, that's where they are, they're a mom, whatever, you know, Pinterest is out, there's no reason to be on LinkedIn. So um, for you specifically, just making sure that when across the board, if you're selecting what platforms you're on um, from a digital standpoint that there's a purpose and you know the core demographic of that. Is that helpful? All right, thank you, Jess Jessica Yance. I think that was great. Our next question um, is to the group. Um, we've had a couple questions on TikTok, so I'm just gonna read one. Um, what are your thoughts on TikTok or video content on social? Do you do you utilize it in any way with your clients or recommend that over a stagnant graphic? Um, I'd jump in, but I'd be interested to hear what Sublime says as well. I've considered them the video experts for sure. But um, from a social perspective, um, I think any of it's worth, worth testing. I think you understand what the demographic is on TikTok and, and what you're getting. Um, but I think you have to look at what other companies similar to yours are doing on um, on that platform, I don't necessarily think it is um, unless you want to. I don't think it's you know you need to be on a business there doing all the fun dances and renegading all over the place. But I think that you could you know look at what a um, a realtor is doing. If you're a realtor, look at what a um, um, you know like like I think Jessica's business. I, I think your business is a little different. I think it'd be more interesting to kind of see if there's anything like what you do and how they're handling it. Um, because I do think, you know, you have the possibility there to tell stories across TikTok. Uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily just need to be used for, for dancing and, and, and fun things like that, but it can definitely be used as a kind of a storytelling platform. And I think you also have the ability to, 
take highly produced videos like something Sublime would do and um, format those and get those into um, that uh, that platform. And, and again, just try it. Just put 30 of them up there and see what they do and look at the ones that actually perform and make decisions based on that. All right, um, next one for the group. Tips for getting coworkers to help with social media content. With five locations, the majority of our content comes from one location where the marketing staff is and who can and who can corner for a photo slash video. Uh, I, I can answer this one. This is Jason. Um, I mean, I think there's a couple different approaches you could take. I mean, the easy, the easy way is to incentivize them in some way. So whether that is um, through some sort of contest or um, potentially, uh, you know, add it to their goals uh, for their review. I mean, there are a lot of different ways you can say, hey, this is, this is part of what we do and what we need to be doing as a company. So I need you to help out. Um, so, you know, that's one way to do it. Um, and then additionally, you know, in large organizations, sometimes what we've found is we can identify um, ambassadors. So people who love to be on social media anyway, they want to spend some of their time there uh, on social media while they're at work. And this is a great excuse to do it. Um, so it's fun for them. So you, you kind of, um, you can find those people and, and you probably already know who those people are. So maybe not expecting everyone to be okay with it or good at it, but identifying a handful of people and then letting them help you kind of wrangle the content. And also offer, for those that have the uh, willingness to learn more, if they enjoy it, then offer them classes or send them to a, um, a you know, a social marketing convention or something that would really help them get in that headspace of uh, different things to try and things that they could be doing. All right, thank you guys. Um, next question, regarding scheduling platforms for social, what are your favorites or best recommendations? It just depends on um, what you're trying to, who you're trying to reach and uh, what your message is. So it just depends on things. And, and you can try different ones with the same content and see where it does better. Um, so I would just kind of um, do some just testing. And I, I jump in real quick too. I think because uh, I I read that question in a different way as well. So I think I read it in two ways. I read it like like what you were saying, um, David, which I think is is a great point. But in terms of if we're talking about scheduling software, uh, which is maybe how I read it. Um, you know, I think you can look at, there's different ones that offer either trials or um, um, maybe even a free level, such as uh, Hootsuite, and Buffer. Uh, Sprout is also an option. Um, Sprout's a little pricey, though. Um, and then there's others that are um, platform-specific. I believe there's one called Later. And, um, you know, th things like that, I think, would be uh, looking into some of those, I guess, industry leaders. I think those are probably the the three top ones would probably be Sprout, Hootsuite, and Buffer um, for now. All right, next question. How do you get your business on Google? Experts. Uh, that's something that uh, you can get help with. Uh, <laughs> I know Kayla, Kayla Bittner's on the, on the call. Kayla, what would you tell people? So claiming your, your Google My Business listing is not difficult. Um, if it's not already been claimed, there's a process that you can go through to verify your business um, with your phone number or your email address or mail a postcard to your location to, to verify it. And then from there, you know, you can post updates, um, update your hours, um, monitor and reply to reviews. There's a whole lot of things, but I, I, a whole lot of options with that. But I agree with David that um, a group like Sublime or like CrowdSouth can help you manage that and kind of get into the nitty gritty of it. Um, because it is difficult when you're one person doing marketing for a whole business to be in all of those places at once. 
Thank you, Kayla. Yeah, I'll chime in really quick. I think for us, it's um, just really important to keep it up to date. Um, not just, um, again, I think y'all would agree, not just claiming it, getting it right, um, making sure that you're constantly updating it um, and engaging with that. Um, that's just as important from a social media digital standpoint, um, kind of that, that full circle. So uh, making sure that that you're not just checking the boxes to claim it. Yeah, I'll jump in real quick too and say that Google really likes it when your address and everything about your business is the same across every directory out, all the major directories out there. So you can use something like Moz Local, so like $100 a year, and you tie it in with your Google account, your Google business account, and then it will make everything across all the major directories match up exactly down to the comma in your address, you know, or the period or whatever. And that really helps um, Google rank you better as far as where you show up and stuff. They, they really like everything to be consistent across the board. Thanks, John. We have time for a few more questions. Um, what would you say to a local business that wants more followers, but isn't really engaging slash interacting with their current audience? Um, I'll, I'll say, I'll mention something here. I, I saw that question and I was kind of wondering um, if they want more followers, but they aren't engaging, I think I would question what was the purpose like because a lot of metrics in the past have been determined on followers that was very important you'd want to have the most followers but I would think these days that engagement is much more important um, you can buy followers um, but actually putting out content that people are engaging with that they're sharing that they're looking at spending more than three seconds on a video you want to create videos and content that are uh, that are engaging and leave um, leave an impression um, I think that's the, I think that's the most important thing. Um, but, but just getting followers for the sake of followers, I, I just think we're probably past that right now. I think we want to be, um, more uh, interactive and engaging. So I think it's really, if, 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 if a business or someone is thinking that way, I think they need to go back and understand and kind of think through, um, do they, you know, what's their reasoning behind that? That's my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I think you make a really great point, Chad, that it's it's more important to increase that engagement before you even think about that, like increasing your following. Absolutely. Because that'll do it for you. I mean, um, yeah, I, I would definitely say creating content that your audience cares about. Um, I think both of y'all kind of tapped, tapped into that. So I would increase your engagement before you had high expectations of paying money because you can get followers, but if your engagement doesn't go up, you're not serving the purpose. Exactly. If you're not willing to put in the time then you can't expect good results. So the thing is you got to put in the time, whether if you're doing it, trying to do it by yourself, then it might be late nights, but um, you know, you have to, engage with them and, and do what you can to interact or they'll leave. They just won't bother with uh, engaging back. All right, next question. Um, I have purchased five different mics for my phone and none were good. Um, what specific mic brand do you guys recommend? So we use a lot of professional microphones. So, you know, maybe a little expensive, like our main mic is $600 that we use. Um, but, you know, if you're doing a social video, if you're just using your phone, uh, AirPods work really well. I know that. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk, if anybody knows who he is, he's a famous dude. You either like him or love him, but he uses these all the time on his videos. And I think that's awesome. He always sounds really good. Um, I wouldn't think twice. And if you don't want anybody to see it, you know, turn the other way, just put one in. That's what I would use. Um, I know I've looked at a lot of microphones for phones as well, and they all get really mixed reviews and, until you get into spending lots of money. And these are fairly inexpensive compared to some major mics. So 
that's my thought. And I'm an audio guy. That's my background. So take it for what it is. All right. Can you use Canva to design a website? Um, uh, I would, I would say you can use Canva to maybe design it, but it won't create it. Like if you're using Canva to come up with the look and feel, you could, you could do that. It's not going to do the, the back end work of launching it. I think Canva is Canva's best at helping you create social media content and posts and, um, things like that. But I mean, I'm not gonna say you can't. If you want to try it, go for it. But I don't think that's what it's best at, in, in my opinion. I would second that. <laughs> Third. Yeah, I think that there's other. I mean, if that's kind of where your budget lies, um, they're just other. And I think we mentioned. I don't know if I mentioned any in that one that are just like more lower budget. Um, but there's a lot more resources. Canva would definitely not not be on my list for that. Simply some social media graphics until you, you know, had the budget set aside for, for a professional. All right, last two questions. Um, first, how much time should you dedicate to social media per week, whether it's post or engagements? I answered back just briefly. Um, I, I, would, I say daily. Um, at least you need to touch it, engage, communicate, comment, make sure there's no messages. Um, and then almost batch creating your calendars um, for the weeks ahead or month ahead so it's not an afterthought. All right. Yeah, that's a great answer. I think also you, you, you have to consider your particular audience. So once you get to a certain